Okay. Um, well, what we were um, wanting to do was like ways that we could empower our teachers in the classroom because how many times have we walked in down the hall and a teacher's come out, okay, I need help. This kid is can't sit in their chair, they're they fall out of their chair all the time, they can't hold their pants correctly. So we put together a bunch of things that might be um, able to empower our teachers to be able to handle themselves, handle the situations before they have to call us right. and make a referral. And in the day of all this RTI that we have to do, I, I constantly get asked, and I know for the person too, like how can we provide these interventions before we put them into refer, you know, full referral or whatever, so that was why they can incorporate this stuff into your daily routine so that you don't feel like, you know, you're having to just add something else to your to-do list. Can we go on the next one? Yeah. Okay, wait a minute, your videos are not there. Where are they going? Where are they going? Oh, they're there. They're there. there. You just can't see them. That's weird. Okay, sorry. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> okay, so there's me and my little yellow post. It's cute, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to attend you. There's some videos, and we'll look at those in a second. And then I added some little posters on the wall. Just some things that you can do. So, to me, if you're if you're pre K, first grade, second grade, you should be doing a lot of movement to begin with. It should already be in there. Um, I think sometimes they just forget that and they don't think that about that being that works for what we're doing. So I just added some things in, but um, movement breaks and those can be as simple as while you're, you know, if you're transitioning from reading to math or whatever, you have them stand up beside their desk and there's like. Tons of resources online, and a lot of it's free of just different activities that they can do. Something as easy as, like, let's pop our hands for a minute, let's stomp our feet, let's swing our arms, or whatever, just to kind of get moving. Um, and then there's some other ones down there. It's like playing Simon Says so that they're following directions and they're utilizing uh, bilateral skills and crossing midline and those kind of things that um, they need to be doing. And then um, I put there an option. Option one, two, and three of ways that you could, if you know, if you have centers or if you have your class, be able to break up even not just in circle time, but sometimes um, having a center in the floor so that they're doing their worksheet prone or sitting crisscross, um, the tape to a wall, kneeling. But there's some different options of, of how they can sit um, and avoid that double U that we get from a lot of our kids that have motor issues. Free school is really yeah. for that. Um, and then the videos, there, I can't, are they not showing over here, you know? I don't even know what they are now. But, um, but there's so many different videos, YouTube, that's free. There's, um, like, this is Go Noodle. Yeah, they Go Noodle is great for funny first Yeah, Go Noodle has all kinds of things. Um, you know, they interact with the TV. Obviously, they really don't, but you know, things come at you, they have to jump over them, they have to duck down, they have to move to the left, move to the right, and those sort of things. <clears throat> Cosmic Yoga is one of my favorites, and she will tell just about any story that you want, you can go find it. So, if your unit that day is on the 100 caterpillars, she's probably got a yoga story to go with it. And throughout the story, as she's telling it, you do all the different yoga poses. So, you get strengthening. Um, you get motor planning, you get body awareness, and um, and even calming sometimes when those kids just need that. Uh, you can play a little bit of I'm going to 
balloons, you know, they're not really going to break anything as long as you're not okay with the latex allergy. But you can, you know, hit it around if it drops on you or if you catch it or however you want to do it, then they have to answer the question or um, they have to do a movement or how, however you want to incorporate it in coordination. And there's tons, like I said, of those little brain breaks that have the movement breaks. Um, these are some cards that I bought at some point. It's like walk sideways to a new seat, walk backwards. And you can do that even like we're going to take a bathroom break, but everybody has to walk backwards to the bathroom. Everybody has to walk on their tiptoes if you don't have a tiptoe. If you have a tiptoe, we'll make them walk on their heels. <laughs> That's what I'm working on right now. Just trying to get one bounce from the tiptoes, yeah. one from the Walk, walk, yeah, you have like to that. stomp or heel walk or those kind of things. Yeah. Um, switch seats. Everybody switch seats. That's, I mean, that's a way just to get them waking up. Um, then some of them like switch seats if your if your name starts with an A, so then they have to start learning those letters. And, like you can do everything. Floor tape is also good. Um, I mean, you can make straight lines that they have to walk, or you can. Um, like the you know, walls, you can't move out of this. Right. X's, numbers. <laughs> and then I brought sensory seed. I got him. I'm going to have to order sensory seed now. I put him on my okay. wish list on Amazon when we also had the flood. So it, it has a bunch of cards that are like uh, movement. So donkey kicks, red light, green light. Nobody plays that anymore, but it's a great game. Uh, balancing, there's some yoga poses, and then it has, what else did it have in here? This one has a bunch of ideas of things that they can do um, that are more tactile sensory bubbles and finger painting, shaving cream, that kind of stuff. And then there's more yoga poses like airplane. Um, rolling up in the blanket, y'all do that stuff too. And the units, you have to do that stuff a little bit more. <laughs> but, you know, kids don't have to stay in their seats. Like I said, there's ways to, you know, if you've got room in, in your classroom, put a four or five of that's up on the wall. Pick four or five kids that have to stand up and do their mm -hmm. handwriting or their math sheet. Um, make them kneel and do it. Make them lay on the belly and do it. Mm -hmm. You can even tap it under the table and lay, lay on the back. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then like on the thigh motors, you could. I was struggling with which way I needed to go with this because there's so much that you could address. Um, but you could, like on my wall here, you've got like pencil and link because you're working on fine tuning. Fine tuning, like so you can have them do things at their desk, like this to work on pencil skiing, uh, pencil twirls. Just being able to do that. Um, having them race on making a dot and turning it over and, and racing it. Just little things like that to work on uh, strengthening the sides of the hand. There's like, I've done an innovations grant, uh, that's what part of this is, to work on the arches of the hand and the sides of the hand. Uh, like this is the power side, this is the skill side, because this is the whole part that holds the pencil. Um, and just learning how to separate those sides of the hand, because that's why we have these two grasps. And our kids nowadays don't get to play. They don't get to manipulate stuff because they're all the time on an iPad or a game or a phone. So they don't isolate those sides of hand. So if I made these for the fact that I want my teachers to be able to have stations, fine motor stations, just exactly what we're talking about. Have a little station set up where you can do uh, pre-writing strokes to warm them up before they go to... Um, you know, doing work. Um, and then there's, like my little videos, um, I'm going to show you a couple, well, shoot, show you a couple here. There's uh, there's a couple of OTs. There's OT Closet and Mr. IOT that I use a lot. And this one is, it's a little hard. Um, where'd it go? <laughs> there it is. This one is a little bit hard, but my kids love it because they think they're an angel once they get it done. And if you got to can't try these. These are really hard because I have trouble doing them. Well, that fast. 
Okay, sign. Ready, set. <laughs> and let's um, get in that multi set direction, which is also on the baby, yeah? Just having the stations where you sample things, mm -hmm. tops, um, rubber band exercises where you're sh strengthening, um, flipping coins over. I've got a marble mazes. You would be surprised how many kids cannot Rubber. use the arches of their hand and roll. Mm -hmm. And they teaching can't, kids they how can't to do this. Yeah, that's true. I've got a lot that can't do that either. So they can't <laughs> cut and it takes that to cut, and they can't. None of my kids can toss the ball underhanded. And developmentally, that skill should come before. But something, I don't know what it is yet, I'm trying to figure it out, that we're lacking in that development now. Kids don't play like we used to. Well, we, and we were talking earlier, kids don't want to go outside. Mm -hmm. They don't. No, I was saying on that video, I, I just got it yesterday, so it's in my head. It asks, how do you feel when you can't go outside to play? And I think the answer is probably supposed to be something like sad or disappointed or something. But kids are just like, I play my video game. Or yeah, yeah. Like, they don't care. They don't care. They, 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 they can't go out to make bread puffs. Yeah, no. I still don't like to be in my house. I don't mean well, my house looks like a tornado. It's either here or there. Things <laughs> like <laughs> taking a push pin yeah. and doing a push pin, poke art. Just putting a bracer on the end of a push pin and just push it. Just little oh, activities. Yeah. That's. Could also you can make. When I came in here, I was they were doing. Uh, Q-tips and paint. Yeah. That's why I would if you're I make my kids dots. paint, I would get my kids to paint with yeah. Q-tips. <laughs> <laughs> and the dots. Uh -huh. And they were putting it on the dots and mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Like Something else paint. you can do mm -hmm. is use Q-tips with is Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid and water, it gives you a multi-sensory of the smell. Because you get a good strong smell there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so that. You said it's stuff. I said my kids love that stuff. Oh, I said they love that stuff. I said they love that stuff. I said they love that stuff. Squirt or like this, kids cannot do. No, they cannot do that. So I mean, and you can get coffee filters and stuff, and you can adapt all kinds of just like a little craft, ten minute craft a day or ten minute fine motor. You can have. That's why I wanted to make kids like this. Is there's plenty of options for all kids. I don't know how big your all's classrooms are, but ours are kind of big. I mean, look at this kid back here. I know, I know. The, the kindergarten at Lecture colored what looked like earths on coffee uh -huh. filters and then sprayed them. Yeah. And then they sprayed them and then the colors expanded all. I love that. My kids love that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But for our state, that's what kindergarten yeah. is. <laughs> and that's the proposed ma'am. Hold like that in their hand. Like that's that what I said. Yeah. Um, also, I use like finger lights. Do you all use finger lights in the classroom? Finger lights to them guide their seals while they're reading or like mm -hmm. they're learning letters and going across, going left to right, top to bottom. That's in the guy. And they're crossing midline. And they're crossing midline. Because you'd be surprised at the number of my kids that can't do like the that. Oh, yeah. Oh, and now yeah. We, I've done that so much they're they've pretty much got that down, so I started doing this with them. Well they're not <laughs> <laughs> So they're not they're not really um you know, but they still get enough that they can, yes, yes. that they can put it into any type of environment. They just got it in this way now because yes. I practice so much. <laughs> we were talking all the research that we done on research from evidence based stuff for our motor and, and, and fine motor just in general is practice. Yeah. That one common denominator is practice, repetition. Yeah, that we had such a hard time finding because yes. they, they want everything to be research based. Mm -hmm. But when you go, there's not truly like research based intervention so much mm -hmm. as research based guided practice, modeling, like, and just doing it over and over and over again. And if you do it with play, the brain connects it a whole lot faster than you do if you do it mm -hmm. just sitting at a table. That's why we're, if you get up and get up moving, mm -hmm. the connections will be made a whole lot quicker. Um, I did part of my stuff, uh, 
was yeah. like I hear a lot of questions about they've got a bad pencil grasp mm -hmm. or they can't <clears throat> stabilize their paper with the opposite hand. Um, that's one of the things that on our, our presentation out there is like sitting city, city posture for writing is really important because if you don't have this gross motor stabilization, you can't get this. So her stuff has to come in to play first before you can get to the writing part. You have to get this trunk stabilized, the shoulder strong, all that before you can get to right. A lot of our kids shoulder right mm -hmm. like this. So what we try to do, that's why we oh, lay yeah, yeah. on yeah, and, and right mm -hmm. is to isolate that, put your weight on your elbows so you can isolate the, the wrist and the fingers. Instead of that, mm -hmm. are you like they do? Um, mm -hmm. Something else, like with pencils, like, to show. Okay. I've got, I don't know how long ago. There's so many things I want to go over. Like if you're trying to teach this and you've got a kid doing this mm -hmm. or you've got a kid doing this yes. with that clothes, you don't want this. Yes. You don't want this. You want it open and this one bent. So what I have found that works more effectively than anything, and I don't have a full-size pencil, but I'll try my best to show you with this one, is to put rubber band or you can make one like this, mm -hmm. and then you twist it and put it over the end of the pencil, mm -hmm. and it pulls it back. Mm -hmm. Once it pulls it back, it causes that automatically to open, and that mechanic, the just the way the position of the hand naturally flows. Uh, hair ties are great. Yeah, because then they don't. Well, number one, they're not a weapon. No, <laughs> I ain't mean to that. And number two, they're. Um, Cuter or, and then softer, you know, put your arm there. Yeah. <laughs> Just like weighted pencils, they're kind of, I have trouble giving them out a whole lot of uh -huh. times because I've had them be, uh, had them utilized as weapons. Yeah. Oh, the most definitely would have been in mind that. I've got tons of pencil grips, especially in there, I didn't bring mm -hmm. them all with me. But this is one that looks like the tip of a mm -hmm. Lucky, I've got quite a few kids that will, cannot use it. They don't. Yeah, that's but I've got several out there. But I'll tell you, the best thing that I have ever used is this. This being placed right here. Can't drop your ball. <laughs> you cannot drop your ball. It's a say it's a magic ball, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Put the pencil in the hand. Use your rubber band or or this. You may need a pencil grip. You may not. You can even put a a, a dot, a sticker. On the end of the pencil, or you can put a rubber band wrapped around where they know where the papers are. Mm -hmm. um, you can also, this is one of my favorite for the really bad fisters. Fisted grasp, 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 is a twisting right pencil. This is the, there's erasers that go here, but uh, this is the only one I had left because I've given them all out. Uh, but they go like this. My kids love it, they call it a rocket pencil. Yeah, I never knew how those were used. I didn't know how those were used. Also, you can use a... Uh, uh, I learned something. Close in. Close in. Mm -hmm. They hold that part in their hand. And it's just a step in the right direction. Um, and then wiki sticks. I love wiki sticks. All kids love wiki sticks. It builds really good fine motor skills. But if you're trying to get a kid to stay in lines and work on their sizing of their letters, put them where you want them to wrap between, and it gives you a raised surface. So they can't go over. A tactical guide that they can't go over. That's awesome. I like that. Yeah, I don't think I play with what you said, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Have these little cut strips where you're teaching them where you want them to Ooh. hold their face. So this shows you, it gives you this where they have to go, and then they know how they have to move it up. So they have to go to each piece of yeah. meat. I'm a horrible cutter, so I'll probably do that myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's just your intentions. <laughs> um, there's all kinds of things that you can do, like. Find other activities like marble mazes are great. Um, just because there's a ball in there and you're having a pinch to move it around. Um, Putty's great. 
do what? Putty's the biggest. Yeah, we gave Chris uh, and all the ADHD toys. So. And you got kids at You got kids at kids. 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 You got kids at because we get a lot of that too. Like, ah, yeah, they can't sit up or won't sit up or yeah. can't sit still, all those things. And with position of paper, this is so, people don't understand how important it is. Like, if you're right handed, you want to position your back. Kids write like this. Mm -hmm. Like, if I'm right and they're right, like, they can't see what they're right. You don't want it like that. You want it like that so they can see what they're right. Like that. Like that. Now, if they're left handed, like, the angle needs like to be a little bit. Little bit farther over. Yeah. But not upside down. Because I see people do that that are left handed. They're like, turn that over. So she also just went on left handed. But she runs over this way and writes this way on the paper. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So on the table. That's the extreme. Yeah. She'll write that way. And then you've got kids with a hooked or wrist. A lot of times, what? Okay. Under the table is good. On the wall is really good for remediating that and fixing that. Even, I don't know, I've had some kids in prom, they still manage to get mm -hmm. up there and do that. But, um, so. Oh, you have to have more slides? Yeah, we do. The fun slides are over, sorry. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so we, I, we just kind of put this in there. It really didn't take up space. So I said, we didn't feel like that was going to take very long, but it actually did. Yeah. Um, I'm not people that ask questions and talk. <laughs> but well, you don't yeah. give me this, so I ain't talking. <laughs> so just like we went on the rest of the day. <laughs> movement is, um, you know, there's been studies that shown that it has a significant impact on cognition and retention and all that. Um, active lessons, like, like I said, I mean, we pretty much said all this. Make them move while you're incorporating those young motor skills into large activities. Um, the fine motor skills will help them be able to button their pants and zip their pants and all yeah, the stuff that they have to do. The ADLs are very important. Um, and like we said, the research says practice, practice, practice. Um, that's the only way to be able to sort of like any of it, like yeah. your visual motor copying from the board. You're going to have to practice. Uh, a lot of that is a teaching too, right. some of it. You know, copying from the board. <laughs> Um, but it is, it's important. Motor skills and handwriting is crucial to wiring the brain for things like comprehension, mm -hmm. academic skills that you have in the classroom. Mm -hmm. If we avoid handwriting, we're going to lose some of those very important skills yeah. because that helps build that foundation. That's what I'm worried about with all these Chromebooks, too. Oh, I know. Handwriting and stuff is right? Yeah, yeah, it is. And it's, they don't understand that, that there's a connection in the brain that it's starting to. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a developmental skill that it's is needed to link those other skills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just like movement, we're losing it. We've lost that already. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, like being able to cross the line is, I mean, a necessity to reading. Yes. Yeah. To get both sides of those brain, but. Just like so right, you know how we write things down to remember them sometimes. That's I know like, I have to. Like when we had spelling tests, like you wrote mm -hmm. the words five times one day, and then mm -hmm. and then you write. I mean, even K now he writes on the end crayon marker pencil, right, and right. then you build it, or you know, but just doing that several times. And you were taught how to write those letters instead of just being like, here, copy these. With or trace these. handwriting part. So yeah, so trace them, and then they're not starting in the right positions and. Well, um, that is a bit of, oh my gosh. They yeah. start at the bottom. I have so many kids that push that pencil up and it drives me nuts. Yeah. And then I have to start from scratch. And it's hard when a kid's already learned that mm -hmm. motor plan to yeah. start them all over. So you have to start. That's another thing. When you're working on development of things like that, you need to start gross motor first. There was a kid, I remember, like, when I can't read in high school now, but like back in the day, mm -hmm. he wrote backwards. Like he wrote it right, right to live. Stuff was right, but yeah, he wrote what like, right to live, but it was so weird. Yeah, was he maintaining? No. Hmm. Yeah, that's weird. But I have, if I'm having to retrain somebody, I start with the uh, writing mm -hmm. and then downsize. Once they get that motor plane in the shoulder area, mm -hmm. then you start downsizing to 
to smaller. Then you kind of can build on that, but you got to start being. The handwriting about you. The handwriting about you is great. Yeah. yeah. Like and they've got a preschool curriculum. I'm trying to push our preschool to get because it sets the foundation. Yeah. She did the handwriting back to you. Yeah, we go way back. <laughs> Teacher I worked with, she done it every day. Um, it's so, yeah. yeah, so we've talked about that already. Core muscles, how important it is to have that for your foundation for anything like reading, writing, anything. So just little uh, ways that all those motor skills will impact your academic performance. Um, like that patterning that's like that uh, on that board, you know, with it um, back to front, across the midline, left to right, top to bottom, those kind of things. So. And then yep. we have activity ideas, but we kind of did all that. Oh, yeah. Maybe that all in there. Golf pencils. Broken mm -hmm. crayons are the best. Yeah. Broken mm -hmm. crayons are awesome. Everybody throws them away. Awesome. Mm -hmm. They're my pick. And I forgot to record it. Oh, yeah. Um, and there's yeah. some more, some more specific gross motor. Animal walks are great. The kids mm -hmm. always love those. Yeah. Animal walk when you go to your bathroom break or outside. I love yoga. Just saying. I like yoga too. <laughs> I said it's like you sit in the floor and you do meditation. Yes. You put meditation music on. Mm -hmm. You sit in the floor and we do meditation yeah. sometimes because this is what well, we do. Well, that's a common thing. Yes, it's regulation. We so, eat it sometimes. Yeah. And we so talked about this already. <laughs> okay. And then. It's on our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's like when you if come to our. Where we have our uh, poster boards, we have that. Oh, you got yes. We have that on a okay. <laughs> with QR codes. Mm -hmm. I used to use the learning station a lot too. Yeah, I like the learning station. Jack Hart, Jack Hart, Hart. 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 he gets played multiple times every time. And these are some lessons for like pencil group, like the. Um, where can put my pencil? Like the crocodile. <laughs> my kids love the crocodile because I always. Uh, the crocodile sundry, he has, he goes and he eats the pencil, mm -hmm. and then it tastes sour, so he goes and we scratch up her face. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's the pencil flip where you pick it up at the nip, flip it around. Oh. And, um, and there's a couple of other ones. So there's there's those, uh, and that shows you. And then there's this thing with the sock. I didn't bring a sock. I, I have, have a sock if you want to use it. No, no, I, I have to cut holes. It's smooth. Um, it's smooth. Yeah. <laughs> My volleyball <laughs> girls are going to do it. But what you do is you get a sock and you cut two holes in it. And it's the thumb and the index finger comes out. And that's the only thing that has the rest of them are pulled in. Oh. And they that's kind of great. makes the hand go into the natural position. So. So there's some more resources. Again, those are on the paper with QR codes. And if there's our Yep. I think it was a good time. Any questions?